Hey guys, John here. Continuing off with our Industrial Asset Week, this sound is going to be called the Mech Death, and this is the sound effect that we hear right after this pulse bass and the drums kind of come in, and it's going to hit four times, so three kind of pulsy sounds, and then it's going to have a long, long sound, and it's going to drop into where the 303 comes in. So pay attention to this spot right over here, and let's take a listen. Okay, so this is the Mech Death. Now this one is kind of cool because there's a lot of different possibilities we can use with this one. And there's a lot of kind of, I guess, maybe secret features. I don't know if you want to call that, but kind of more so hidden, not so obvious in pigments that we're going to be using. So as you notice here, as I was hinting here, this is us modulating the macro here, this comb filter. So as we check this out here. We can get a lot of nasty sounds, industrial, kind of metallic-y, dissonant sound here. So let's dive into this. Let's turn off our external effects because we do have some extra delays going on here and then some extra reverbs for this, uh, for this mech death. And also we have an EQ going on here. So let's turn this off for now and let's kind of go through this patch here. So we also have effects inside the synth and we'll turn that off as well. And then we're gonna be using two engines. So let's turn the second one off and this is what we have for the first one. So we're gonna be on wavetable. Now you might be thinking that this basic waveforms, this wavetable right here is what we're gonna be using, but actually it's not. Because this here, this wavetable volume is all the way down. So we're actually not hearing this wavetable. What we're hearing is this modulation source under the modulator. So this knob down here where it says tune, right now it's in Hertz. So if you click this, it might be default for you on ratio, absolute or relative, something like that. If you switch over to to fixed on Hertz here, this is a really cool option because now this basically turns into a signal generator. So all the way to the bottom is at 0.1 Hertz, which is extremely low, and all the way to the top is at 20K. So more, more of a signal generator than what we normally would get. You know, it's usually like 20 to 20K, something like that. We can go even lower than that. So it's, a, it's basically a signal generator on steroids. Now, with that being said, this is useful because we can make kick drums, we can make snares, we can make other types of percussive elements. And if that's something you're interested in, making some kick drums or snares or, or something like that, then please let me know in the comments below because we can talk about that all day. That's a really fun uh, sound design, stuff like that. And uh, just to mention while we're on that topic, all this drums here and the snare is all made uh, through this exact same process using this uh, tool here. So this kind of segues into how this is being worked. So this is getting modulated by this function, which is just a downward saw, and it's going at a speed of one over four for our tempo. And so we hit a note, we can see this move here. So it's slowly dipping the pitch. It's kind of a pitch shifter, if you want to think of it that way. And this, uh, this knob here at tune is kind of going to be sitting at 48.9 hertz. Once this function has lived its life and it's no longer a thing, it's going to end at 48.9, but the modulation is going to be moving it higher than that. So we have that pitch dive sound in combination with this filter sweep. So that's basically how this engine here works. It's very useful because once we have effects here, we really get that kind of dissonancy, weird pitch divey sound. So moving on from there, we're going to be going to engine number two, the analog one. Now this one is, uh, it's kind of strange because this is not melodic in any sense of the word. This is more creating texture, dissonance, metallic -y, just nasty sounds here. So by default, um, I guess by default in this patch standard, the course is gonna be 37 semitones upwards. So a healthy amount and very dissonant, right? Now for this FM amount, we're only gonna be using oscillator one. I did select to keep this uh, number two also on to FM, you can always increase this volume if you feel like you want another oscillator in there and maybe change the uh, the, cor the course or fine tuning. Totally up to you, it's set up that way if you wanna use it, but keep in mind the second one is off right now, even though these both are getting FM'd. So we look at this and we say, okay, this is getting frequency modulated at a value of 0 0.099 from this knob here. So almost halfway of what this knob can offer. And we draw down this little line and we say, okay, this is getting modulated by oscillator number three. That's this guy down here. And it's just a sine wave and there's no change positive or negative in the course or fine tuning. So that's kind of just how it comes. So kind of basic FM, it's nothing too crazy. We're just kind of messing some things up here. That's kind of the thought process behind the sound. And that's what we get here. 
Now, it might sound underwhelming, but we're, what we're going for is a metallic -y, dissonant kind of inharmonic tone. And that seems kind of like what we get, and then we add that with the wavetable engine number one. And we get that low end sweep with that top end of the second engine, giving that metallic -y kind of vibe. So that's kind of a good starting point. Now from there, both of these engines are going to filter number one. Now the first one is one of my favorites is this MS-20. It sounds fantastic. The resonance is so cool and all the different modes are awesome. So what we're doing, as we mentioned before, we're using a high pass here to kind of accentuate that low end. We're kind of sweeping downwards to really accentuate that. Now we look at our cutoff and this is getting modulated by this function yet again. So we look at our function and the first one was this tuning that we talked about in the first wavetable. The second one is the cutoff modulation. So when the envelope's done, when it's no longer a thing or this function, the cutoff is gonna be at 20 hertz. Now we have a little bit of dive here. So when we hit a note, we can see that filter being moved and we're getting that low end through a high pass by cranking this resonance knob to 0.632. From there, we can look over here at the filter routing. Now filter one is going to filter number two. Now let's take a look at filter number two and see what's happening here. Now this filter is the comb one. It's gonna be on the LP6, low pass six, and it sounds really cool. By default, the gain comes pretty hot, but I think it's kind of a cool choice because it just sounds awesome right out of the box. So this gain is gonna be at 0 0.990, the damping 8K volume zero, pan straight up in the center, all pass zero, and the keyboard tracking at one. So the magic behind this is this frequency is going to be sitting at 255 Hertz. And it's going to be modulated not by this function, but by our macro down here that we automated within the song right over here before the 303 comes in. Kind of give you a little bit of a riser. So all the way to the left, 255 hertz, and then we go all the way to the right. And this is going to be the max distance that it can travel. If we hover our mouse over this pie chart, that's going to be the distance there. So we can use that. <laughs> Some crazy low end right there as well. And we can always modulate this one slow to make weird kind of spacey sci-fi type of effects too. So keep that in mind. There's a lot of stuff you can use this patch for, not just kind of some pulsy sounds. So moving on from there, let's dive into our effects because uh, this is a lot where the magic happens. So we turn this on and we're using a total of five different modules, FX A and B. So let's turn these off individually and kind of just go through them and see what's happening here. So... The first one it's going to be running through is a distortion. So this is what we've made so far. Now, once we add this distortion, this is the first step where the sound starts to take its characteristic. Now, this is going to be on the germanium preset here or algorithm, depending on what you want to call it. The dry wet's going to be a lot at 78% and the drive is at 43.2. We're not going to be using this high pass stuff down here, so don't worry about that. From here, it's gonna be going into another distortion into a wave folder, and wave folding just does something magical. Now this is gonna be the type for a sine wave. The dry wet's going to be 71%. The drive is gonna be 22.4 dB, and not missing with any of the outputs for any of these uh, here, so it should be default at minus 10.5, something like that. And not the uh, high pass filters, we're gonna be leaving those off. Next, what this happens is it's going to the tape echo. Now, right before this tape echo, what we do need to talk about, if we look over to our envelopes here, we have this extra long release at 507 milliseconds. So attack is one millisecond, decay, 300 milliseconds, sustain one, and release 507. Now, why is this release important? So we hit a note. And we want a little bit to ring out, right? We want a little bit of it there. So what's gonna be happening is that we have a little bit of a release happening and then we have this tape echo to kind of carry off, kind of piggyback off that release to kind of create a little bit more space. Because we have our core sound and then we have the tail end. And this tape echo is really gonna help with that. It's a decently low value at 20%. The time is one over eight, fine, zero, input volume, zero, intensity, 0.422, and the stereo is spread at two. And I use this tape echo because it's kind of nice because it detunes stuff and it just it has this certain characteristic to it that sounds really nice. So next, this is gonna be going into a chorus. So take a listen how different this sounds. So without the chorus, it's almost up, up front. It's kind of right there. It's not as big as it could be. So take a listen with and without the chorus. With a chorus.
it almost kind of gives you that surround sound kind of feeling. So here's a higher note without the chorus. Now with. Now without the chorus, it's a little bit more focused perhaps, but with the chorus, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit more blurry, I guess if you want to call it that. So that's kind of the reasoning behind this module. The dry wet's 44%, the rate 0 0.580 decay. Uh, delay 13.1 milliseconds, de uh, depth 2.20 milliseconds, feedback 0.115, and two voices, square is off and stereo is on. So for our last effect here, this is going to be just a regular delay. And again, this one is piggybacking off the previous delay. So it kind of goes to the release from the envelope, from the amplitude envelope, and then it goes to that tape echo to kind of ex extend that release with a little bit more interestingness. And then we go through more modules, we go to this chorus, and at the very end stage, now we add just a dry release, or a dry de delay, that kind of ties everything in together. So it kind of makes you feel like you're in a big room, kind of like it's just echoing through maybe a big metallic hallway, it's kind of something like that. So the dry wet's going to be 15%, the time, again, 1 over 8, fine, is going to be 0, feedback 0.432, stereo spread 0.2, High pass frequency 20 hertz and then the low pass 20,000. So the reason I did not drag this down is because I wanted that metallic sound. I don't want the delays to to remove high frequency content because that's going to be a lot of the the work we did in our engine over here, especially engine number two, where we're using this weird frequency modulation and then we're running it through this comb filter. We're getting those weird dissonancy higher end harmonics. So with this delay, we don't really want to cut that out. That's kind of the texture of this sound. Normally we would kind of bring this down a little bit, so that's the reasoning why this is uh, unchanged here. And then over here on this auxiliary, this reverb is kind of just hanging out there. It's not it's not working. As you can see, the send knob down here is down. If we brought this up, we could look over here on send and see this at the same knob. We bring this back down. Go back to our effects, and it's down. So just so you know, in case you're seeing that reverb, and, hey, what, is that doing something? No, it's not actually doing anything. It is just kind of there on uh, standby. So after this, we are basically going to run this through an EQ. Not too much of a change. So if we take a look at this and let's kind of blow this up a little bit so we can kind of see what's going on here. Over here on this first one, we're kind of cutting it about 78%. Uh, I think it's like six maybe on the steepness and just kind of cutting out some of the low and stuff we really don't need because we have the the rumble, the that kind of pulse bass going on. We have the kick drum and you know maybe later on we might add some more low end stuff to it. So we need to kind of pick and choose what's going to prioritize our low end here. So in this situation, it's going to be the kick drum and it's going to be that, that pulse bass. So here we can safely cut off that low end here. Now over here, we do want to accentuate those higher end harmonics, which we were building from the beginning, from the FM, going through the comb, comb filter and then leaving those from the last delay. And this is kind of going to be bringing those up just a little bit here. So that's the thought process behind this EQ here. Now, What's cooler than a lot of effects is more effects. So we have this here and I'm setting it to a couple extra delays. And then a huge Valhalla vintage verb reverb. And that just kind of makes it sound a little bit more massive. And a cool part with this patch as well is you don't necessarily have to play it as pulses. You can, but you can also do it as just weird textures and kind of mess around with this comb macro over here. And just make some nasty stuff. So I'll let you experiment with that. If you would like to get this patch, it's totally free. It's in the video description below. You can click it and download it and install it within pigments. And uh, like I said before, if you're kind of unfamiliar with installing these presets, check out the, the uh, full on course of pigments that I've been doing that we're still working on. And uh, there's a whole link to that playlist there. I think it's video number two about the preset browser and how easy and intuitive pigments makes to import and export different presets. So. Yeah, I thought I'd mention that before we close out the video. So this is Mech Death, and uh, be careful with this one. This one can bite you. It's a kind of a nasty, nasty patch here. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I will play us out with a little bit of Mech Death, and uh, yeah, here we go.
Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.